Sonnet's Echo 11 and Echo 20 are two of the best Thunderbolt 4 docks on the market today. They're both priced very fairly and give you a ton of features that allow you to connect one cable to your computer and to expand it with tons of different ports, including USB, Thunderbolt, display, network, audio, and more. They also both can power your computer while you're using it plugged into the dock, so you only have to use one cable to power your whole setup. The Echo 11 comes in at $200 and the Echo 20 Super Dock costs $300. They have quite a bit of overlap in all the features they offer, but the Super Dock does give you more ports and a built-in NVMe SSD slot on the bottom, as well as RCA jacks and more connectivity on the front of the dock too. Sonnet did send me the Echo 20 to check out and to give my opinions on, but all the thoughts in this video are my own and opinions are my own and they have no say in the content of this video. I just really like both of these docks and want to share some of the different ways I've been able to use them. The first thing you'll notice when you compare the docks is the Echo 20 is quite a bit bigger than the Echo 11. Both of them have a very large power adapter, but the Echo 20's body is bigger. Now on your desktop setup, it really won't make a ton of difference as far as size goes. I don't think you're really gonna wanna travel with either of these docks, as both of the power bricks are really big and annoying to travel with. Also, both of these docks use Thunderbolt 4, but they're also both fully compatible with Thunderbolt 3 devices. So you shouldn't have any problems with using them with a Mac or a computer that uses Thunderbolt 3 and not Thunderbolt 4. Let's start to compare the different features. The Echo 20 supplies up to 100 watts of power to a computer, and the Echo 11 supplies 90 watts. I didn't have issues with either of them powering a 16-inch or 14-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. You'll notice a lot of difference on the ports on the front of these docks. The Echo 11 only has one USB port, while the Echo 20 has four. You'll also notice the Echo 11 has the Thunderbolt host port on the front of the dock, while the Echo 20 has it on the back. The Echo 20 Super Dock also gives you the ability to use a locking Thunderbolt 4 connector on the back of the dock too. I really like it being on the back because this just gives a cleaner look where all the front ports are just open whenever your computer's not plugged in, but the Thunderbolt cable on the front of the dock would make it easier to change between multiple desktop computers that are plugged in. You could have multiple Thunderbolt cables you leave plugged into the back of your Mac Studio or your Mac Mini, and then you could just swap them on the front of the dock instead of having to reach around to the back. For my setup, I'm only using this with a laptop though, so I just leave my Thunderbolt 4 cable lying on my desk whenever I take my computer places with me. Both of them also have a UHS-2 SD card slot reader on the front. The Echo 11 also has a power button on the front, while the Echo 20 has no power button. The back of the docks, the ports get a little bit more different. The Echo 11 has no HDMI port, while the Echo 20 does have an HDMI port. The Echo 11 has three Thunderbolt ports on the back, while the Echo 20 only has two Thunderbolt ports. Plus, it has the one that you actually plug your computer into. You also get a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet jack on the Echo 20, where the Echo 11 is capped out at one gigabit. Another big difference on the backs of them is the audio jacks. On the Echo 20, you get RCA outs and you also get a dedicated mic input. On both of these docks, you do get a headset input on the front of the docks, but the Echo 20 gives you that additional audio connectivity with the RCA and the microphone jacks. Another big difference between the docks backs are the USB ports. The Echo 20 has four USB ports and the Echo 11 only has three. I also really appreciate that on the Echo 20, you get two USB-A and two USB-C. And they also all support seven and a half watts of power. On the back of the Echo 11, they're all just USB type A ports and they don't support the faster seven and a half watts of charging. Another standout feature on the Echo 20 that the Echo 11 does not have is the NVMe drive slot. This allows you to take a variety of different NVMe drives and to slot it into the bottom of the dock to have built-in storage to your dock. So you can use it as an extra drive for archive purposes or as a way to use Time Machine with your Mac without having to use another external SSD and taking up one of your ports on the Echo. You can use an NVMe with up to eight terabytes of storage. And I have a link in the description below that tells a bunch of different drives that Sonnet has tested with this dock. Now it's also worth noting Sonnet has another version of the Echo 11 that is the Echo 11 HDMI dock. And these two are very similar, but they have a couple small differences. The Echo 11 HDMI has a faster USB port on the front than the Echo 11 standard does. And the Echo 11 HDMI also trades in one of the Thunderbolt ports on the back for an HDMI port. So you do lose one Thunderbolt jack on the back of the Echo 11 HDMI that's already there on the Echo 11. Another difference is the Echo 11 HDMI gives you two and a half gigabit speed versus the one gigabit network speed on the Echo 11 standard. After comparing all the different features of these docks, I think there's a couple things you can consider when you're trying to decide if you should buy the Echo 11 
or the Echo 20. I would get the Super Dock if you use a lot of external storage or cameras or other devices that you're going to be unplugging and replugging into the dock a lot. It's a great way to offload files from a camera like a Sony a7 IV using a USB-C connector. And then you can also plug your external SSDs into the front ports as well. So it's a great workflow using external storage. If you want to use more Thunderbolt 4 devices, then I would consider just buying the Echo 11 standard version because you get more Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back of it. But if you're using a display that uses HDMI, you should consider buying the Echo 20 Super Dock or the Echo 11 HDMI dock because then you won't have to use a dongle or an adapter. I'll buy the Echo 11 if you're more on a budget and you just want a device that can power your computer, give you that network connectivity, as well as to plug in a couple different USB devices on the back. But if you really want to do a lot of external storage, using cameras, and just changing your devices that are plugged into the front of the dock, then to me the Super Dock is the only way to go. You also get the RCA jacks, a mic jack on the back, and you get the built-in NVMe SSD slot on the bottom too. So you get a lot more features with the Echo 20 Super Dock, only spending $100 more. You're also going to have to pay a little bit more to get the NVMe drive to put in the bottom of the dock. If you have any other questions about the Echo 11 or the Echo 20, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Also, if you're interested in buying one of these Thunderbolt docks, I have links in the description below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content.